So this is going to go over the tips and tricks um, that we went through in the workshop last Thursday. I know that a bunch of you really wanted to be there and couldn't be there, um, so I figured we would do this as a way to still offer you credit and if you still wanted to learn some of those things from the workshop. So what I did was I sent you the Excel document that we used to work with. It's called Workbook One. Um, if you wanted to open that up and follow along and you can pause this video um, as we go through and, and you know stop to try these things and so what I'll do is when you're done all of the edits that we make to this workbook if you just stop by my office and show me that you um, tried to play with the workbook and tried some of the things we did in this video um, then I'll give you your certificate and then you can ask me questions too so when you open the workbook, um, if this isn't the view that you're seeing right now, um, you may be on a different tab. So as you can see down here, you can make multiple sheets within an Excel workbook. So I have three sheets on here right now. Um, that way you don't have to make separate workbooks. If they have to do with the same thing, you can make multiple sheets. So if you click between these sheets, you may be on a different sheet. So we're going to start with the sheet that says staff on it. Um, so if you want to navigate to that and just click through the tabs so you feel comfortable navigating through tabs and just so you know you can make another sheet by just clicking on that tab. So if you would like to, you can right click on the sheet you just made, you can delete it and click OK. You can also rename your sheets really easily by just either double clicking on that sheet and then typing or you can right click on it which on a Mac is two fingers and then click rename so there was two different ways to rename it you can double click it or you can right click on it and click rename you can also take your tabs and click them and drag them to reorder them so if I wanted this sheet to be first I can click it drag it and let go of it and now I can move the order of these so I'm just going to move this one back to the beginning. You can leave them in any order. Um, and as you can see here, we have a little bit of information that I filled in. And these up here, as you know, are called columns. And on the sides, we have rows. In the middle here, these data fields to enter text or, um, or numbers, these are called cells. So the first thing I showed in the Tips and Tricks workshop is how to um, easily resize multiple columns or multiple rows at once. So some people will go through here and try and resize these one at a time and they're trying to get them the same size. Um, what you may not have known is if you come up here and select, click and drag like this, multiple columns at once, and then if you resize one of the columns like this, they all become that same exact size. So as you can see, when I hover between two columns, this becomes this little black bar like this. I can just click and drag to resize one column and they all become that size. So same thing goes for rows. If let's say I wanted to make um, all of these rows a little bit bigger, if I select all of these rows by clicking and dragging down two through 12, and then I hover between row two and three, let's say, and click and drag it, I've now expanded all of the rows all at once and now they're the exact same size which is nice. Alright, so those are the first couple of things we went over, just some little tricks. Okay, and then we went through then we went through and tried um, some text combining tricks. So Sometimes you may have a worksheet that looks like this, um, maybe first name, last name, or maybe uh, you know some other text, and you want to combine them. So you can actually do that using a formula. So the first formula I'm going to show you is called the concatenate formula. So if you click on the cell where you want the new text to go, and I click equals and start typing the word concatenate, C-O-N, and as you, can, as you can see, it comes up in the functions. So if I click on concatenate now, it gives me the word concatenate, and then it gives me a beginning and end parentheses. 
So as you can see, it tries to help you out and say text one, text two, comma. Um, it tells you, you know, how to enter your information. So if I want the first part of my text to be Richard, I can click on Richard and see what it did was it entered A2, meaning A2 is the cell that that's going to come from. All right, then I'm going to click comma because that just separates where do I want my next piece of information to come from. If I want my next piece of information to be Richard, I can click on this, and as you can see, it entered B2. All right, now if that's all I want in there, A2 and B2, I can click Enter, and it fills in Richard Papalizio. All right, but let's say I want there to be a space in between there. I'm going to come up here, and I can either double-click to edit the formula, or I can edit it always from up here. If you want any text to go into this, you can just enter it by sticking quotations in there, whatever text you want, end quotation. So after A2, remember the comma always separates any text that you want to be in there. If I do quotation, space, quotation, that means I want a space to be entered between those two words. Now I'm going to stick another comma in here because you always need to stick commas between separating any sort of data entry. So this basically says enter the text from A2, comma means to move on to the next thing, quotations means to enter some sort of text, in this case I put a space as the text, and quotations, comma means move on to the next thing, and then B2. Now I'm going to hit enter, and as you can see we now have Richard space Papalizio. Now, you don't have to go through and do this for all of your cells because Excel has autocomplete or autofill. So if I click on Richard Papalizio, this, this formula I have in here, and I hover over the bottom right-hand corner, I have this little black cross. If I click that and drag it down, it has now filled in all of these accompanying cells down below and it takes them from the corresponding cells. So while you made this first formula come from A2B2, it's going to take the second one from A3B3 and so on and so forth. So it's going to pull them from the corresponding rows. Okay, so let's try a, something a little bit different here. So if I come through here, I can always click and drag to select all of this information. You can always right click and select clear contents or delete, that's totally fine, either one. Um, now this is something we often have to do, uh, Michael and I, in the tech department, uh, and maybe secretarial staff might have to do this as well, and that's concatenate you, these to make usernames or something like that. So again, I'm going to click equal to start entering a formula. I'm going to start typing the word concatenate, and then I'll just select it out of the list. Okay, now it gives me the two parentheses to start entering my text. Now, sometimes you have to make a username something like, uh, you know, Richard Papalizio into R Papalizio. So this is pretty cool. What I can do is type the word left, okay, and then I'm going to put a parenthesis, a beginning parenthesis. So that means I want the left of this word Richard. Let's say I just want R Papalizio. So if I do left A2, meaning I'm going to take the left of the word Richard, and then do comma, and now if, as you can see here, it tries to help you. It says number of characters. Now I only want the R, so I'm going to type 1, and then close parenthesis. So now I'm just getting R from that cell. Now again, we always separate the next item by a comma, Let's do comma, and then I want the whole word Papalizio. All right, and then I'm going to do another comma, and let's say I wanted all the usernames to be R Papalizio 2015, J Huttinger 2015. Again, to add any sort of text, we use quotations. So quotation, 2015, end quotation, and then hit enter. And as you can see, I now have R Papalizio. 2015. Again, we can use the autocomplete or autofill by hovering over the right hand lower corner of this cell, clicking and dragging down, and we now have already made usernames. 
So again, I just use the concatenate function here, coupled with the left function. So I'm going to show you one more function here, which becomes very useful in creating um, usernames and passwords, or just conforming data in general. And that's the upper and lower function. So if I type equals lower, and then click on whatever text I want to be lower case, Papalizio, and hit enter. So as you can see, it's made the entire word lowercase. I mean, only the P was uppercase to begin with. But in the same fashion, if I type equals upper parenthesis, tell it which text to take. So click on this and then end parenthesis, enter. It's made my entire um, word uppercase. So again, I can click and drag this and fill them in. Sometimes you need to make everything upper or lowercase just for conformity's sake. Um, and those two functions can be added in with the concatenate function. So you can concatenate Papalizio uh, with Richard and you know add in all sorts of extra text. So those become very useful. In the same way we use left uh, to get just the R from Richard, you can also use the word right to just get the last letter of his name or the last few letters of his name, just for example. So now if you haven't been following along um, on your workbook, I want you to take a moment and pause this video and tr you know try some of these things out or rewind the video a little to try them out. And then I want you to challenge yourself uh, to concatenate using the concatenate function um, to create our Park Ridge email addresses. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the concatenate function, combine Richard with Papalizio, and then enter the text at parkridge.k12.nj.us and then autofill these cells. So challenge yourself to pause the video and do that now, and then I'm going to show how to do it in just a moment. So if you're stuck and couldn't realize how to do it, um, here's how we can accomplish that. So again, if I click on the cell right here and click equals, start typing concatenate, and I select that function. The first text in our Park Ridge email is first name. So I can click text one. Again, we always want to throw a comma in there to separate the texts. Okay, comma. The next thing in the email is Papalizio. Okay, insert a comma. And then the next thing is at parkridge.k12.nj.us. And this is the same for everyone. Now remember, to enter text that's not already in a cell, we're going to use quotation at parkridge.k12.nj.us. End quotation. And just hit enter. And there you have it. You have a staff email address. And I can go ahead and auto-complete the rest of these. Okay, so let's move on to some other tips and tricks here. We are now going to look at some formatting. So you can use all of the basic functions that you have in Microsoft Word. So you have bold, italic, and underline up here. Okay, you also can come up here and change the size of the font. You can change the style of the font. So really everything that's available in um, Microsoft Word is also available in here as far as formatting the cells and the text within the cells. This is a really common one. Uh, some people would go to print this and not realize that there's no grid lines. So these grid lines, you see these crosshairs, they're just uh, for your workspace right now. Now, Right now they're not going to print. So if I select the area I want to print, all you have to do to get those grid lines to show up is there's a little drop down box right here and you want to tell it where you want borders. So right now I want all borders. And there you go. Now when it prints, it will print all those borders. So other things that are formatting tricks, uh, this is a really frustrating one because if you enter, let's say a birthday, DevOx birthday is uh, October 25th. If you enter 10 slash 25, it automatically defaults um, to a date. 
Now let's say you wanted to stay reading 10 slash 25. There's a bunch of ways you can format cells. So if I select these cells, all of these staff birthdays, and I go up into the Excel menu and click Format, then click Cells, I get a menu that comes up and it allows me to format those cells however I please. So um, if I want to come up here to date, as you can see it gives me a variety of ways to put that date. So if I want instead for it to read 1025, I can click on this format and click OK. And as you can see they've all now changed. And I'm going to just go back up into that format menu again, click on cells, and as you can see, I'm just going to click through some other ones. There's all kinds of formatting here, specific for time, uh, specific for currency. Uh, most of the ones you're going to use are in general and number. So number is nice when you're trying to get something to round or not round. Uh, you can edit the number of decimal places. If you're ever looking for something specific, you can go to custom. And you can use the custom menu to uh, really specify exactly what you want if you're looking for something special. Okay, so I'm going to go back to date, and I'm going to leave it on 314 with no year, because we don't want to give everyone's ages away here, and I'm going to click OK. So this is how your text, or your, excuse me, your sheet should look at this point. Okay, so moving on to some other formatting things we can play with here. Um, let's go over to the, um, another tab here, another sheet. I'm going to click on uh, sheet number two. And actually, while we're here, let's rename that because I have some workout schedule stuff on here. And I'm going to either double click on that sheet or you could always have right clicked on it and clicked rename. So I'm going to hit workout and hit enter. And I'm going to take that tab and move it to the middle. All right, so as you can see, we have some workout stuff here and I'm just going to resize this a little bit. And we're going to play with some formatting stuff now. So let's say that you have a big data spreadsheet and uh, you wanted to, now this isn't a lot of data, but you know this is just an example. Let's say you wanted every other line to be shaded. That way you can read it more easily. Um, you do not have to go in here and do cell fill and create a purple cell, let's say for example, and then go to the next one. I mean, you could do it like this, but this would take a really long time. Okay, so I'm just going to undo those. What we can use is what's called the formatting paintbrush. This is one of the most underutilized tools and it's one that I love. So if I come in here and select this first row, and let's say I want to color the first row light green, all right? Well, let's do it a little darker. You can barely see that. Okay, so if I want to format other cells just like these two rows for example let's say I want them to be green white green white green white green white I can select these and then use up here there's a paintbrush with blue paint on it this is the formatting paintbrush so it doesn't copy contents of the cells it just copies the format of the cells so if I click on this as you can see now we have these I call them the marching ants surrounding that area now I select the cells that I want to copy that format to. So I select them and let go. And as you can see, now it's copied my format. So you can use this to cover formatting for a wide range, a wide area. So I'm going to hit undo and just show you that it also carries um, font. So let's say I wanted the um, every other row, the green row, to have bold font. I can hit bold. Again, I can select this, select the formatting paintbrush, and then tell Excel where I want that format to follow. Okay, and as you can see, it's not only carried my cell color, but also the formatting of the text within the cell. So the only thing it doesn't copy is the contents itself. So I'm going to hit undo, and I'm only going to, I'm only going to color uh, just this area of here, this little tiny table we, we are working with. Okay, and I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to put my grid lines in. 
Okay, now let's look a little more uh, with that autofill. Autofill, as you could see, um, was when we took something, entered it in a cell, and then hovered over the bottom right-hand corner and carried that down. Autofill works for a bunch of other things, too. So let's say I have this workout schedule here, and I wanted to number my workouts. So I could go through here, and again, this is a really small data set, but let's say it's a big data set. I could type one, two, three, et cetera, four, but there's a quicker way to do this. I could enter the first few in a series, like one and two, and if I select both of that series, so I selected both these cells, and then grab the lower right-hand corner and drag it down, it will fill in the rest of the numbers for me. So I could fill it all the way down here and save myself a ton of time. If you only select one cell, let's just say one, let's say I want all of these to say one, and I drag this down, they're all going to fill in one. So if you wanted to complete a series, you really have to select at least two things in the series and pull it down. This doesn't just work for numbers, this will also give you, let's say, I want to rotate these, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. As long as I select two out of the series, drag them down, it will rotate Monday through Sunday. Okay, we can get the same thing for January, February. If I select the first two in the series, drag it down, I can get months. Okay, and this, this works for a lot of things. So that's a really neat little thing to try. It will also work if you go across. So let me just get rid of some of this that we have here. Okay, it will also work if you go across. Let's say I wanted to do across the top Monday to Monday through um, Sunday and, and rotate them. So if I do Monday and Tuesday, and I select both of these cells and then carry them across, it will autofill across as well. And same thing with one, two, three, and the months of the year, and there's a bunch of them that work. So those are some auto-completes. And let's go back here and, and fill back in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. So I didn't mention this before, but I'll mention it now. Um, you can also use, as you can see, whenever you enter numbers in a cell, they always automatically right align, and whenever you enter text in a cell, it automatically left aligns. If that bothers you, if you want to change it, you can. Let's say I want all these numbers to left align. I just select them and use the alignment options very similar to how you do on Microsoft Word. So I'm actually going to center the whole entire chart. Let's do that. Now, I did get some questions about graphing. So I will show you some very, very basic graphing things. Uh, nothing in too much detail. If you do have questions more about graphing than what I show you, feel free to stop in and I can certainly help you with that. Your students probably know it very well. Um, so if you want to have them use it, you know, have confidence in them or um, invite me in and I can certainly give uh, them a quick run through. So, okay, so when we're graphing the first thing uh, we're going to do is select the data that we want to go in the graph. So uh, let's say I just want to graph how many minutes you do that type of exercise. So I'm just going to select um, this data right here next to these minutes of each exercise. So select the data and then if you come over to the chart menu, so if I do charts, you could also have gone up into the Excel menu and hit insert, but we'll do it like this. Okay, so click charts. Um, now you choose the kind of chart you want, so I want a column. Uh, and then it gives you all kinds of different formats here, but I'm just going to pick the basic one. Okay, so what it does is it automatically creates this graph for you. Now this in automatically inserts a legend uh, for series one, but I only have one series. There's really no need for a legend, so I can actually just click on that and click delete on my keyboard and it gets rid of it. 
So as you can see, we have a nice chart here, but um, we are missing some components. It doesn't automatically insert titles and things like that. So if you come up here where this purple button has appeared that says Chart Layout, Here's where I can come in here and do um, a chart title, axis titles, etc. So let's click on axis title, horizontal. Let's do title below axis. And now we'll just double click in this area and do muscle group. Hit enter. And let's come back up here, do axis titles, vertical axis title. And we'll double click and do minutes. Okay, and, uh, obviously you can come up. Oops, I'm going to click back on chart, click on this chart again, and click on chart layout because I clicked out of it by accident. Okay, and now I can edit my title. And we'll just say Tina's workout. Schedule. Okay, so go ahead and leave this graph in here so that you know I know you played with it. Uh, there's also other things you can play with in here. If I select um, uh, these bars and double click on them, I can get other uh, options in here. If I go to fill, I can do different colors of the, the bars and things like that, so I'm going to hit cancel. There's also easy chart styles if you just flip through them over here within chart layout. I can make the bars look 3D, I can change their colors and things like that. I can also, um, if we go back to chart layout one more time, add in data labels. Um, if you put them here, they actually enter right on the bars. Um, you can also get them to enter above the bars if you wanted. So there's all sorts of options in here. You can also insert a data table, which is kind of cool. Okay, so that's some just basic graphing. I mean, this is this can do so, so, so much. I mean, you can do multiple groups, multiple bars for each set. Uh, there's just a lot to do. I mean, it's a whole separate workshop, but I did want to go through some of the basics there. So um, let's go over to the third sheet that we have not looked at yet. Um, so I'm going to click on the third sheet, and if we scroll all the way up here, as you can see, there's a ton of data here. So make sure you're at the top. I'm going to right-click on this tab to rename it, and I'm going to name it Student Data, just so I can tell them apart here. So this is a typical looking export from PowerSchool um, that the secretaries and uh, the tech department have to deal with quite a bit. And as you can see, when it exports from PowerSchool, it's pretty ugly looking. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in here and resize it a little. So if I come up here and select all these columns and drag this one out just a little bit, we have a little bit more space. We can see everything a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is create a pivot table. So this will allow me to sort the data. So one of the most common mistakes with Excel when you're trying to sort a, a large amount of data like this is using this easy sort option. Now there's nothing wrong with this sort option, but here's what happens. If I select, let's just say, this chunk of data right here. Okay, I just selected these last names. And let's say I wanted to alphabetize this section by last names. If I go in here and do uh, sort by ascending whatever, Okay. See, what it's done is it sorted the last names, but as you can see, it did not keep the first name with the last name. So what we need to do is, I'm going to hit undo, control Z, uh, command Z, and what I'm going to do is put this in a table because what it will do is it'll keep Jack with Burns, with W, with M, it'll keep all of this row together always, so it groups the data. It also makes it sortable by every single column, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and group it by selecting these six columns or seven columns. Now I could actually go uh, eight columns, excuse me. Um, I could actually click and drag within the cells but I have a lot of data here so I don't want that'll take a long time to drag it all the way down so you can just select all of the columns it's much quicker like that. So now that you have your data selected if you Go over here to the Tables tab, click on Tables, and all of these tables, these are just different styles, it doesn't matter, they all do the same thing, um, they're just different formats. All of these will put 
um, these columns worth of data into sortable areas. So if I click on, let's just say the green one, it doesn't matter, you can pick whichever one you want. As you can see, it's created uh, column headers and it's created uh, some nice formatting so you can see your data even better. But more importantly, it allows me now to do a sort. So if I click on last name, now I can do sort ascending to descending, but it keeps the data together. Okay, so see it kept Venkat Ab Abaraju uh, with his, uh, his name and his information. This is actually an export of every class that they take. So um, let's say that you wanted to see, and this is something Gabby needed to do earlier in the year, she needed to find out um, how many students were in each class, and then within that class, how many were males, how many were females, and within that population, how many um, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and other. So I can actually sort by course name. So let's do sort by course name. And I can do ascending first. So if you have a large amount of data, it takes a minute. Uh, and as you can see within that, which is really nice too, I can actually pick out, let's say, just the AP Biology kids. So if I unclick Select All, and then let's say I just want to look at Acting 1 and Acting 2, I can click on both of those. Like I said, if you have a large amount of data, this might take a little while. And then hit... X, as you can see now, it's narrowed me down to just those kids. So if I come up here, as you can see, all of these have an arrow. This one has a little funnel on it. That means there's currently a filter on it for just acting one and acting two. So we can come in here and do clear filter to get all of the data back. So this is actually kind of a nice feature too. If I take this table now and select all the table, now I can come up here and use this custom sort. If I click on the little arrow next to the sort and do custom, this allows me to add multiple levels of sorting. So if I want it to sort by first course name A to Z, so as you can see we're already sorted like that. We have 3D and then it goes into ABC. But then I want within that class for it to sort by last name of student. I can add a level. So if I click on add level, it says then by. What do you want the second thing to sort by? So if I click on column, last name values A to Z. Click OK. So now within 3D graphics, here's my 3D graphics kids right here. Now their last names are in alphabetical order. All right. So let's go back to that and add another level. So I'm going to select the data again. I'm going to go back to custom sort. So it's sorted by course name, then by last name. Let's add another level, then by gender. All right, and if we want the males first, they're indicated with an M and females are indicated with an F. So we would do Z to A then if we wanted. And hit OK. Okay, so now look at my 3D graphics kids. No, that's not a good example. There's no females in that class. All right, let's look at another class. Let's look at acting one. All right. All right, so as you can see, here's my, it's sorted first by acting one. Then it's sorted by last names. Then it's sorted by gender. All right, so I'm going to come up here and let's select the data one more time. And I'm going to put what's called a conditional format on this. So let's say you needed to quickly count um, Asian students in each class. If I come over here to uh, back to home, I can use what's called conditional formatting. These are some really cool tools in here. If I go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. These are really neat. So if I do highlight cell rules if they are equal to, let's just click on that one. Let's say I wanted all these cells that have an A in them for Asian to uh, be light red. Okay. As long as I tell it which cell, so if I put in here A, 
and hit OK, now it's looking for all of those cells that have an A in them, and it's going to conditionally format them with light red fill. So you can do this with anything. You can do this with uh, text. You can do it with numbers. Um, as you can see, let's do this. I'll select this grade level column, do conditional formatting, and I'll do highlight cell rules greater than. And let's say I want all of my 11th and 12th graders to be um, yellow, okay? If I do greater than not, or excuse me, greater than 10, because I want 11th and 12th grade, and hit enter, as you can see, now we have all of our upperclassmen. Okay, so there's some really neat things to play with in conditional formatting, some, some cool stuff. Okay, so I'm going to show you another cool function, especially if you're trying to count cells that fall within a, you know, a certain criteria in a large data set. Um, so let's say um, I wanted to count the number of boys that are taking um, uh, accounting 1A. So we'll scroll down here to accounting 1A. All right, so if I click over here <clears throat> and click equals, then I can get access to my functions menu. So if I click or if I start typing count if and then select count if out of the menu, again it gives me count if and then it gives me end parentheses, start parentheses. <clears throat> then it, it tries to help me. It says, where's your range and what's your criteria? So the first thing it wants is the range. So here's all my kids taking accounting 1A. And I'll just select the gender cells. Okay, and that's, yeah, that's the accounting 1A kids. All right, so there's my range. Now it says comma, so I enter a comma. And then it wants the criteria. What's the criteria for counting the cell? So we only want it to count the cell if it has an M in it for boys. So we actually use quotations again for this. So we do quotation M and quotation enter. So as you can see, it's now given me the number 10. So there are 10 boys taking accounting 1A. I can always double click this and come back in here and say, well, I really want to know how many females actually. So I can say the range is the same, accounting 1A, but I'm going to delete the M and put an F and hit enter. As you can see, there are three females taking it. You can also use the count if uh, to count numbers um, or ranges. So let's say we wanted to count the number of seniors in that class um, or count the numbers of 11th and 12th graders. Let's do that. That'll be tougher. Count if, give it the range. So we'll select the grade levels of all the accounting 1A kids, comma, enter your quotations to give it the criteria, and let's do the greater than sign and then 10, end quotation and close your parentheses. So this says within this range that I'm telling it how many of these cells contain a number greater than 10. That's what it's saying. So I hit enter and it's saying there are eight students over the sophomore level. So eight students that are seniors and juniors together. Um, this could be really helpful in your SGOs when you're looking at a large data set and you're saying how many students scored over a certain percentage. So you could use this and say you know how many students scored over 50% or 60% or whatever it is, and it'll count them, which could make your grouping potentially much easier. So if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, I'd be happy to answer them. And if you come and show me your workbook and show me that you've completed some of the things we tried on here, I'd be happy to give you your certificate and give you credit for the class. And I hope you have a great day.